Hi everyone, today we're going to go over lesson 8-4, setting up chairs, which helps us work on making conjectures and arguments. We'll talk about what those words mean, and we'll um, kind of dig in and dive in and do our best with this one. This is a little bit of a tricky lesson, especially for me to teach where I can't be right next to you. So I want you to just remember that we're going to give it our best. And we're going to try our best, but if we get to the point where we are frustrated, we're going to just kind of walk away from it and give it a breath, our best effort. So today we're going to start by looking at two products and trying to make at least one factor pair for each of the numbers. So our numbers look like this. We have 12 and 16. So I want you to think of all the different ways that you could get 12 as the product. So one of those that I can think of would be to multiply 1 times 12. Then I like to go on and think, is there anything I can multiply 2 by? And I could do 2 times 6, and that would get me 12. And then I'm going to keep thinking and keep thinking, and oh yeah, 3 times 4. Those are the different ways that we can get 12 as our product. These are factor pairs. We learned about that yesterday. All right, for 16, different ways to make 16. 1 times 16. Can we do 2 times anything? Well, it is an even number, so 2 times 8. And then there's one more that I'm thinking of, 4 times 4. So these are our factor pairs, 1 and 16, 2 and 8, 4 and 4. All right, we're going to be um, going and doing a problem together before we open our math journals. So I'm going to turn to... ...problem right now. It looks like this. It says, Miss Soto is setting up chairs for math night. Her room cannot fit more than 35 chairs. She places the same number of chairs in each row. As she sets up the chairs, she makes up a problem for her class with the clues on the next screen. Use the clues to figure out how many chairs Miss Soto set up. So what are the things when we're looking at this problem that we know about Miss Soto and her chairs problem? We know she's setting up chairs for math night. That's kind of important, but not a really key detail. We know that her room, though, cannot hold any more than 35 chairs. So that's going to be our maximum number of chairs. We also know that she places the same number of chairs in each row. And as she sets up the chairs, she's going to make up a problem for her class. So we know 35 chairs total same number of chairs in each row. We're gonna take out our math journals now and we're gonna tackle this problem together. It's on page 261 and it looks like this. So let's go ahead and open up to that. I'm gonna underline the same things that I just underlined on the last page, 35 chairs. So um, 35 chairs is the max and then we're gonna do same number of chairs in each row. And then we have these clues. We have clue A, clue B, clue C, and clue D. With each of these clues, they tell us something that will help us figure out the answer. So clue A says that when there are two chairs in each row, then there is one leftover chair. So this tells us that the number must be odd. Because if it were even, if there were two chairs in each row, there would not be a leftover chair. In clue B, when there are three chairs in each row, there is one leftover chair. Clue C tells us when there are four chairs in each row, there's still one leftover chair. And clue five, or clue D, excuse me, says that when there's five chairs in each row, there are no leftover chairs. So this clue tells us that it's a multiple of five. 
five. So it says use the clues to figure out how many chairs Ms. Soto set up. And then Joy, one of Ms. Soto's students, made a conjecture. A conjecture is a fancy word that means a guess using the information from the clues that Ms. Soto set up 13 chairs. Work with your partner, that's going to be me, and use the clues to make a mathematical argument for or against Joy's construction, conjecture. You may draw pictures or use counters to show your thinking. Explain your reasoning. So what they're saying is that the guess is that she set up 13 chairs. So let's see. Does it fit with clue A? Is it an odd number? Yes, it is an odd number. Now, if we go to clue B, does it work with clue B? It says if there are three chairs in each row, there's still one leftover chair. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So when we follow clue B, thirteen fits that clue. What about when we do clue C? When we put four chairs in each row, one, two, three, I'll draw a line here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That also fits. There's still one leftover chair. When we put it into five chairs in each row, there should be no leftover chairs. Let's see if that works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Well, right there, clue D. Clue D proves to us that 13 chairs does not work because if we did follow what it said in clue D, then there should be no leftover chairs. We're going to go ahead and work in the home link packet, and there are more pages in there that are going to help us with this problem. They look like this. It's in the blue packet, and it's a blue piece of paper, and we are going to do our best on this one, and we're just going to walk through it together. So um, don't stress about this one. Just kind of go through it with me. This is the same problem as before. We know that clue A tells us when there are two chairs in each row, there's one leftover chair. We learned last time that that means that we are looking for an odd number. When there are three chairs in each row, there's one leftover chair. Four chairs in each row, still one leftover chair. But five chairs in each row, there are no leftover chairs. And remember, we learned that that means it's going to be a multiple of 5. And then it says, how many chairs do you think Miss Soto set up? Make two conjectures. Remember, the room holds no more than 35 chairs. So, we can make our first guess. We need to choose an odd number that's a multiple of 5. I think I want to have my first conjecture be 15 because 15 is an odd number and it's a multiple of 5. And I think that um, we're going to go ahead and say that my second conjecture is going to be 25. And let's try those out. So use the clues to make the mathematical argument for or against your first conjecture of 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first, we already know it's an odd number, so it fits clue A. Let's try out clue B, where we put three chairs in each row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Wait, the clue B told us that when there's three chairs in each row, there's supposed to be one leftover chair. Is there a leftover chair? No, there's not. So even if it were to work with the other two clues, it doesn't work with clue B. So we would say um, 15 does not 
work with clue B. So it is wrong. So our conjecture, our educated guess was 15, but our argument is that 15 does not work with clue B, so it's wrong. It only has to not work with one of the clues to not be the correct answer. All right, our second conjecture, and this will be on the back side of the paper. You can go ahead and pause if you need to get caught up with writing things down, but I really just want you to kind of stick with me during this lesson and not stress about what you're writing down. Just make sure that you're understanding what I'm talking about as far as if it doesn't work with one of the, the um, clues, then it doesn't work at all. Our second conjecture was 25. Now, does 25 fit with clue A? Is it odd? Yes, it is. What about clue B? When we put three chairs in each row, is there one leftover chair? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. Does it fit with clue B? When you put three chairs in a row, is there one leftover chair? Yes, it does. So now we're going to move on to clue. C, and I'm gonna kind of divide this up. Clue C. Clue C says when you put four chairs in each row, there's still one leftover chair. So let's try it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Does it work with clue C? When there are four chairs in each row, there's still one leftover chair. So clue B, one leftover chair. Clue C, one leftover chair. So far, we're good. We've hit clue A, it's odd. Clue B, it fits with that pattern, and clue C. So now we move on to clue D. When there are five chairs in each row, there are still no leftover chairs. Let's see what happens. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. When there are five chairs in each row, there are no leftover chairs. Does it work? Yes. Yes, it does work. So we would say 25 chairs works because it fits all the clues. Great. So you will see that with our first conjecture of 15, we found that it did not work. So our argument was that it was wrong. But our second conjecture, our second guess of 25 chairs, our argument is that it does work because it does fit with every one of the clues. So go ahead and get that information down and then go ahead and turn the page to the next page in your home link packet. It's going to be the homework for today. And I'm going to get you guys started on this, so make sure that you are following along with me. Uh, today your child learned how conjectures and arguments are related. In math, a conjecture is a statement that is thought to be true. And an argument is the mathematical reasoning used to show whether a conjecture is true or false. In the problems below, children are asked to find two different ways that band members can be arranged for marching. Then they are asked to choose which argument that they think is better. When children are asked to explain the reasoning for a choice, they're being asked to make an argument. Encourage your child to show them the mathematical reasoning he or she used in the explanation for which arrangement is better. Problem number one. There are 24 members in the school band. The band director wants to, them to march in rows with the same number of band members in each row. Find 
two different ways that the band members can be arranged. You know that you're working with 24 band members here. You need to figure out ways that they can be arranged. You do have to have the same number of band members in each row. I would do um, this. I would put a line right here to divide it up because you have to do a sketch to show each arrangement. So your first arrangement could go on the left and your second one could go on the right. And then you have to look for number two, which way do you think is better? And then you have to explain your reasoning. So when you look at the two arrangements that you came up with, what do you think would be the best arrangement for the band director to have? And why do you think that that would be the best arrangement? That's all I have for you today. Um, if you have any questions on the math lesson today, we do have our um, Zoom call at 2.30 today, and I would be happy to talk through things then. Have a great day. Bye.